Formula 17. That's not the name of this game. We're going to have to do it again. It's F17. F17. It's 17 times better than Formula 1. On Amigos, everything Amiga. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're talking about F-17 yeah. Challenge. Yeah. It's a, a, a wacky name for a not wacky game. That's true. That's true. Now, Aaron, I know that you've not really ever owned a race car in real life. No, I'm not. But there's a lot of shows on TV that feature a lot of driving spectaculars. That's true. You know? Yeah. Is there is there a favorite TV or movie car that goes fast that you you, you would always wanted? I was going to say TV show. Or TV show. Well, I, I, there is several TV cars that I mm -hmm. want. The original Batmobile, mm -hmm. the, you know, the cool the Adam, Adam West, West one. Mm -hmm. Listen, that thing looked cool. It did. And it still looks cool. Yeah. And it looks better than any of the other Batmobiles. It pulled out real, real fast from the Batcave. It had the cool, it had the big turbo jet on yeah. the back. You know? Yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> I just thought that was, as a kid, I was just like, my God, that's the car. What kind of mileage do you think that thing Didn't got? Didn't matter. You think Batman's footing the bill for his own gas? <laughs> That's probably not. He's making a cop pay for it. I know that from working for the cops. No cop pays for nothing, brother. In terms of car shows, you know, I'm, as you may know, I'm not what I would call El Car Literato, if you know mm. what I mean. Not so good with fixing the old car. I mean, right. once I have a moment. Yeah. I can change a tire. You, you, you swapped know. out your windows when they gave out on you. I did. Yeah. That was a miracle. But... There was a show, you know, you ever seen the movie Cannonball Run? Is that Cannonball Burt Reynolds? Cannonball? Yeah, Dom DeLuise. I've never seen it, but I've, I've seen the poster. It. You've never seen that? I haven't seen those Sammy movies. Davis and, uh, it's got uh, Sammy Davis and... It's got Sammy Davis Jr. in it? Sammy Davis is in it, oh, Dean Martin, Jackie Chan, like Roger okay, Moore. I need to watch this. This sounds great. <laughs> Everyone from the 70s, in the, Terry Bradshaw's in it, Mel Tillis. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's in this movie, and it's a movie about, if you don't know, there was an original race that was an actual race that was called the Cannonball mm -hmm. in America from coast to coast. I think it still goes down on the underground. Yeah, but it's not the same. Because mm -hmm. in the old days, it was sort of like the movie. It's mm -hmm. in the movie, it's about the race. Mm -hmm. It's an illegal race, you know. The second one was also good. Then they made one just called Cannonball. That was good. It had John Candy in it. I think was the name of it. There was a show on... Now, uh, well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Go ahead. When you describe this movie, it makes me like it less. It's a, it's just a movie about guys racing across the United States. It's so much not that. I mean, that's the premise. Mm -hmm. But think of who's in this. Right. All right. For example, Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise, everyone's got their own gimmick. They, they've they got themselves an ambulance because they think no <laughs> cop will stop them. And they pick up, like, Foster Brooks to be the patient. You know, the old drunk guy. They got a hot, I think it's Sally Fields in there. Mm -hmm. Then there's a... Two hot chicks in like a Lamborghini. Mm. You, and it, I think it's Terry Bradshaw and Mel Tillis in a pickup truck. It's mm. just ludicrous. Okay. 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 So I'm don't. Back. I'm back on board. <laughs> Listen, if you, you, and it's not that violent, it's not mm. violent, it's right. wacky. Right. You need to see it. Okay. Anyway, I've always been obsessed with the concept of that. Also, the peaking to Paris. I like watching documentaries on that. Mm hmm. There was a show on Spike TV called Bull Run. It was hosted by Bill Goldberg, of all people. Really? The wrestler? Yeah. And it was because he's a, a lot of people don't know this, but he's a big time car enthusiast mm. as well. <clears throat> and it was a show where they took a bunch of people, like, and teams, and they had their own cars. And you try, you go from one checkpoint to the other, and you're not supposed to cheat, but some, a lot of people did, mm -hmm. you know? And then in between the two legs of the race, they'd have this, like, challenge for, like, the people that were in last place. You could challenge one of the higher place guys, and if you won, you could swap with them. You know, and if they won, they'd get a prize or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, there'd be stuff like uh, dirt track racing, you know, Lamborghini versus a Jeep or wow. whatever. Ludicrous things would yeah. happen. This was a great show. It ran for a couple of years. That's one of my favorites. Another one I like, Carpocalypse, which I know I've talked about that one before. That's where you have, like... Bus racing and, mm -hmm. and uh, racing when you're towing boats mm -hmm. and stuff, demolition derbies. Yeah. I love that kind of crap too. They, That's the kind of racing. I want to see cars suffer. That's did they ever have a video game based on Carpocalypse? They did. Yeah, it was called, uh, it was on the Xbox. One of the episodes that you pan so thoroughly without probably listening to it. Yeah. It was called Test Drive Eve of Destruction, and they actually had uh, clips from the show in the game. 
Oh. And it's a great game. It's got couch co-op, or I guess it's not really co-op, but you can play like two, three or four players at once. Mm -hmm. Local all multiplayer. The events. It's so good. So good. One of my all-time favorite games. Mm. Now, what about you? You're not a big car guy either, but what are you into? Well, you know, I, I really, really like the uh, cars that can do multiple things. Yeah. When we, on, the, on the Lotus episode, when I was over with Neil, we were talking about the Lotus that can go underwater. Yeah. You know, I like cars that can fly. I like, uh, what was that show about the car that was actually a man? Auto there, man? No, oh, no, that wasn't what that was about. Oh. There was a show called My My Mother is a, is My a Mother car. the Car. My Mother the Car, but no, Auto Man wasn't a car. What was he? He was a he was like a, a computerized... You never seen Auto Man either? <laughs> Do you think I'm sitting at home watching no. Auto Man? What's that supposed to mean? Is that a shot? <laughs> Listen, Auto Man had this car... That glowed, and it was all. It sort of looked like the Tesla truck. Okay. I mean, car, but it yeah. glowed neon. Right. And the thing about that car is, like, when it came to like a city street where like a block where there's a turn, instead of going like, it would go, it would just like there was zeros. Like, it would never, it wouldn't stop, and it would instantly it's like make the curve. The Batman Amiga game when you play the driving level. No, it's and much you, 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 less <laughs> lame than that. It's more like when you play like the light cycle. You okay. Make the turn. Right. This is a straight forty-five so, degree angle. But the best part is, Auto Man just. Big, like, British guy. He's so, like, Autobahn's his name. It's his name. But he had a geek that was his buddy. Mm -hmm. And the geek was just a regular dude. So, when they were driving and he'd hit that corner, they would show the inside of the car. And the guy would be like, Ugh! smashed up against the side. It was always, it never was not funny. So, how is Auto Man, if you put it up against Minder, which one is the better show? It's good. They. <laughs> Why would you compare them? Well, I was they thinking about I was thinking about other. famous Minder. I was thinking about famous British TV shows. No, my, for one thing, the Minder guy sang the theme. Mm -hmm. That gets a lot of points for yeah. me. But Auto Man had Cursor. Cursor was just a little thing that would float around, and it would draw the car, and it'd get in the car if it needed the. It auto, would draw the car. Yeah, you'd go like, blah, 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 and it would draw like it was like, like a, it was like basically like a CAD program. <laughs> And like it's like man, it's like I need the autocopter. It'd be like blah, blah, and it'd make the so autocopter. So he can he can draw the, the the they should have called the show Cursor. That sounds like well, the Cursor real draw. Cursor was just sort of like he was like the geek that was hanging out with Auto Man. It's a, he didn't talk. He'd go burr, 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 like that. Mm. Did he look like Ortho? No, he looked like a little like a uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> but he served sort of the same role. <laughs> he looked like a, a big like spiky ball that would fly around. You ever seen oh. Phantasm? Imagine if the Phantasm ball, except less hideous and with more spikes everywhere. What's Phantasm? You never seen that one? Is that a TV show? You wouldn't like it. No, it's a horror film. Oh, no. No. <laughs> wow, that's a big jump from Auto Man to Phantasm. Did it look like a, the the the, uh, the training uh, droid that Luke uses no, in Star Wars? No, no, because this thing's more like spiky. Okay. You know, you'd think... It's funny that Cursor would be... It's more like a morning star, basically. Oh, like, okay. It just floats around. Okay. Huh. Yeah. They should have used Cursor as a weapon. Well, I mean, if he could draw crap, maybe he could draw the gun or something. I don't yeah, know. The I mean, the show got canceled so quick they didn't get the full. They didn't place explore out. the limits of what cursor. I, I could guess do. I heard it was a pretty big deal in the UK. Mm -hmm. Like they got toys and stuff. I don't think we got any toys over here. Mm. And know? this was eighties, right? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got that right. It's as easy as you can get. All right, Aaron. Well, we're moving into the nineties. Let's talk about F seventeen challenge. Love theme right there, boat from the uh, from the F seventeen challenge. Now you know you know Aaron. Before we get into F seventeen challenge, I want yep. to give a quick shout out to some of our Patreons: Rob McDavid, Howard Price, Jazz Dog, Seb Kiernan, and Bumface Poo Hands. Thank you guys and all of our patrons for supporting Amigos and keeping this show on the road. It's not like a postmodern band lineup right there yeah. when you read all those guys' names off. Thank you, everybody. So. Before we even get too deep into this, I read this and I was like, yeah, this makes sense. This is F1 style racing, right? Now, I'm not the biggest F1 fan. Like, I don't know. I'm not saying I don't like it. I just don't know much about it. So I was under, I couldn't figure out, I was like, why would they call this F17? Because that sounds like a fighter. Sounds like, like a jet. And I don't know if you read this or not. I did. I did read so it. You, so you know the scoop. But mm -hmm. apparently, this was going to be called F1 Challenge. Right. <laughs> and. So F1 was like, oh, yeah, we're going to sue you. 
uh, for that one. Yeah, it's, there's an organization like FIFA for for F1 racing called the FIA. Yeah, and they 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 became very protective over the F1 name, mostly because they love money. They, they even said the letter the, the letter F the number one off limits. That's, That's right. my favorite part. <laughs> you can't ever put those together. So I will say, Team Seventeen at least made it funny, right? By calling it right. F17. F17. So I'll give them that. But yeah, we're talking about the old F17 Challenge boat. You ever heard of this one before this week? You know, I'm having a hard enough time just keeping my mic on. What? Did it fall <laughs> off again? It fell off again. It's because it's on the zipper. Sometimes it gets a little weird. Oh, my gosh. Back to the basics. Have you heard of this one? I've never heard of F-17 Challenge before this week. When If you ask me, name some Team 17 games. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, Worms, Alien Breed. That's that's it. That's the list. Body blows. Body blows. Come on, the, all the arcade pool. Super Frog. They did tons of stuff. Yeah, they've done tons of stuff. And you know stuff. that just because it's advertised in the game. Right. But uh <laughs> but I would I did not know that they made a racing well, they didn't really make a racing game, but they published this racing game. Yeah. So uh this was F seventeen Challenge again, uh released in nineteen ninety three. So everything was still cr- cooking in ninety three. Again, Boat nailed it. This was published by Team Seventeen, but not developed by them. This was developed by Hollow Dream. Now, Hollow Dream, aside from F-17 Challenge, has exactly one other game on the Amiga. We've never played this one, and I'm not sure I've ever heard of it. It's simply called Top Wrestling. Wow. Top Wrestling. Well, so we've got to get we that gotta on get the that list. we got to get that one, yeah. Uh, of course, Boat named off a lot of Team 17 stuff, uh, the, but this thing was clearly developed uh, not by Team 17. When you look at the, who was involved in it, you had a lot. looks like you had a lot of the uh, Spaniards involved in this one, Boat. Uh, the coder on this was Fabrizio Faringa. What do you think about that? Are we sure that they're Spanish and not Italian? Could for be. some what reason, did I, I say? You they said could Spanish, be. but I, for, some reason, think? for some reason, Italian is it sticking make in my head. It doesn't make much racing. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's Spain. I don't know what's bigger there or not. If chat can check on that for us, we'll give you a real time update. Yeah. So Fabrizio Faringa did this. He worked on top wrestling, he worked on a game called Warm Up, but this is the game we also have to play. Waggle O Mania 2. Hey, if you're going to make a silly game about a multi sport event, that sounds like right up your alley. Waggle O Mania. Yeah. The graphics on this were Alfredo Siragusa, who also worked on top wrestling and warm up. By the way, there's a game called Warm Up. That's a game. Mm. <laughs> Not the best name. It's a prequel. <laughs> Would you stop? Uh, and the other graphic guy, Raphael of, uh, of Valencia. Uh, and the music on this was Nikola Tomajahovic. Now, listen, this guy's done some stuff. Black Viper, Dragon's Kingdom, Tilt. He also was working, uh, working on top of wrestling and warm up. But he was the genius behind the music in Fighting Spirit. It's oh, the all-time yeah. Great theme. Yeah. It's <laughs> so, right up there with Savage. <laughs> right. You know what I like, don't <laughs> yeah. you? Steal from the best. Uh, and the cover on this was from Kevin Jenkins, such as it is. It's not what I would call it. Uh, it's very much like in the same vein as the pool cover. Mm-hmm. It's not much going on. Not, not the best. This is an ECS-OCS joint. Now, get this. I found some wacky stuff out about this. Before we get into the game proper, might as well go through this kind of wackiness. Apparently, somehow, this got a, bl- a uh, BlackBerry release. Really? How according, interesting. That's according to... Uh, to uh, uh, Moby, mm-hmm. which I was like, that's strange. I don't know if they released a bunch of games in there, but I also kept seeing this pop up uh, on the um, CD32, and it's not listed as a CD32, but it is. Uh, this was a comp. This was a, a, a compilation release, uh, and it along with it was the Project X Special Edition and F17 Challenge Combo Pack. Makes sense. Now, um, the author had mentioned that he would plan on releasing the AGA version of F-17. Well, mm-hmm. you're going to love this. Team 17's like, nah, we don't need that. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was like, well, this stinks. And then they're like, well, listen, we're going to put this on the CD32. He's like, well, hey. They're like, nah, don't change anything. And so he was so irritated that he changed the title screen to be colorful just so he could use the AGA on something. And that's all they changed. Well, he probably wanted to be paid. And Team oh. 17 was probably like, but I'm just saying, <laughs> no. I'm just saying, this is another one of the many, many releases that crept over the C32 where they just basically dumped it on the CD-ROM. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just, I mean, this is a way that you can, you know, this is a double pack. They're trying to shift software at this time as fast as they what can. What do you think of that so. combo? Project That's not bad. X and, and this That's not bad because you the, get a the, shooter and a racing game the on the same disc. The price would be where I, where, what I would be interested in, in, in knowing. Oh, I should mention the price plays a pivotal role in this game, Boat. 
budget release. This eh? was a twelve pound ninety nine p release. Yeah, so this was not a full price. Yeah, and, and I when the reviews I read heavily took this into account. Yeah, uh, when they were reviewing this, mm-hmm. when when they were reviewing this game, uh, boat. Listen, this is if I ran a publishing company. Yeah, this is how I'd do it. Okay. I, once a year, I'd release a big tentpole game, something like a Super Frog or something like that. Sure. And then the rest of the year, I'd, I'd, I'd comb the European countries, the Po folks, and I would say, hey, I see you've got a game there that you'll probably let me publish for real cheap. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll publish it. We'll put it out as a budget release. We'll sell tons and tons of copies because the budget scene on the Amiga was not what it was on the 8-bits. Yeah. You rake in the cash. And, you know, we've played a lot of, like, public domain stuff that, like, you could have released. It would have been great. Mm-hmm. They should have been on their ball. They right. should have got on right. it. Me and you could have published. We could have made big money. Absolutely. Alien Fish Finger, bam. Yeah, bam. That's, a free, that's free money right mm-hmm. there. Uh, when you boot this up, it asks you if you want normal or full screen. Did you just notice that? I did. NTSC allows you to play at full screen. Right. On the Mister, that was the only way I played. That's the only way I played too. Mm-hmm. You could put, and that was it was good viewing. Yeah. Nice, good, nice full screen. So I appreciate that. So the uh, F17 box here gives you the rundown. Here I'm going to go through these real quick. You get the 360 degree car rotation. Select from four different cars. Full field of appearing drivers, 17 individual courses with hills and tunnels. Now, I know there are 16. I don't know how to get to the 17th. Have you? Did you hear how to get to the 17th one? Hmm. I don't know how to get to it. Weather conditions and uh, uh, many other effects. Fully animated uh, pit crew. <laughs> uh, we'll get into that. That's interesting. Okay. Excellent sound of music. Huge array of game options. Save game and uh, lap records to disc. Excellent presentation is also one of the bullet points. So put, Wonderful title screen. You got to put yourself over uh, when you are uh, when you are putting out the game. So the game comes up with a nice little intro. There's a guy's helmet that mm. shows the game. The music comes up. What did you think about the? What were your initial impressions when this thing came up to the main menu? It was okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't anything earth-shattering, but it was fine. There was no cars spinning on the no. track or anybody no. getting ran down. No pre-rendered animations. I guess that was some guy <laughs> rendered out. In retrospect, that's probably not the best one. No, but what, what I, here's what I would do. Yeah. This is where I would spend some bucks, and I would have a really nice animated pit crew animation <laughs> getting your car ready to go so when you hit the button, you're, you're ready. I will say, something tells me that not including the animated pit crew in the opening was probably a good move. <laughs> so you're immediately, uh, once you pick your screen, you come up to your uh, main menu. You've got four options here. Uh, one, of, one of the options is options. You've got race, single circuit, practice, and world championship. So let's talk about the option screen because this thing, one of the bullet points, that it was full, rich with options. Yeah, and I would, I would get, I would say that I would a say it's, fair it's point. I would say it's uh, mildly wealthy with options. <laughs> it's it's well off. Yeah, it's, it's going to be okay. To it's retirement. upper middle class in options. So your options are your 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 car choice, and we'll get to that. Auto or manual gear. Uh, how you want to accelerate, which is button or up. which yep. I appreciate that. Yep. Um, how many laps? Five, seven, ten, uh, and we'll get to the other mm-hmm. one. Game mode, which is normal or arcade, mm-hmm. and then a level, which it goes from like novice up to expert, and then lastly, uh, edit names. And edit names will take you to the place where it has all the racers' names and all their teams. Now, yeah, this, is the, this, is, the time. this is the up. time where, you know, it's not very often I'm stunned and, and surprised and, 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 and made to feel happy. Mm-hmm. But when I, uh, the first time I fired this up, of course, I didn't visit the option screen at all. I just yeah. went right in and, and, and did a race. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. I get to the end of the race. I win the race. The name at the top, my moniker in this game, none other than David Pleasant. David Pleasant. That's right, folks. In this game, you play is highly, highly regarded racer, David Pleasant. Yeah, and you're on the Commodore Business Machines team, yeah. too, if you notice that. You won your first race. Yeah. I'm impressed by that. I'm pretty good at this game. So, oh, okay, well, we'll get into that. Um, and lastly, in the options is reset best laps if you're a jerk and your buddy came over to your house to get rid of him. So, and both mentioned it, where you... Mr. Pleasance is one of the names, but when you, get, when you go to edit names, you can literally go down through the couple pages of teams and names. Each team has two guys, and you can just go, like, I put me and you in the game I played, so just for fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we now have a racing team. Well, that's wonderful. And, Amigos uh, boy, Racing. Let me tell you something. 
<laughs> we're not taking home the money. <laughs> but uh, um, so that was kind of a neat thing. So once you're done with that, uh, and any comments on the option screen? It's pretty self. Yeah, it's very Lotus inspired. I would say it is, yes. Uh, which is if you're going to steal, steal from the best. Now we, let's talk about the car choices. You've got four cars available. These are these are unnamed cars. Mm -hmm. Well, got they're named with color. Red, red, white, green, white, and yellow, green. Mm -hmm. Okay, so red has the powerful in the engine, very fast in straight checks. I will say the red one handles like a tank. Red, white, it, it says here, reaches its best even during wet races. So it's sort of like your mudder. Mm -hmm. Then you've got green, white, powerful engine, strong structure parts. That's usually the one I went with. And then yellow green, a a fast car for fast tracks. Now, I read that these cars actually were actual cars, and I'm going to tell you which cars they represent. Interesting. So, okay. Now I don't know which is which. This is the guys at Moby said you, your choices are between a Ferrari, a Williams, McLaren, or a, Benet a, a Benetton. Okay. So in F1, all the cars are the same. Right. So the, these just represent the different teams. Yeah. So it's not like the, the, the cars would look different. I'm just saying this on behalf of our American audience that may not be familiar right, with that. Right, right. Because, I mean, they do. So, when you pick the cars in that menu, they just change, swap the, the color. The color is the only thing that's so, different. And so I, it's a shame that they didn't. What I would have done is I would have continued to be silly and call It's Ferrari, you know. Yeah. And at least that way, you would, the, the colors for the cars, that's that's lame. They, they also mentioned better. there are, the field includes. 22 cars and i never really counted them but there's at least 18 i know that mm -hmm. so well they, yeah because you're always out of 22 right so. so uh so that once you've done that it's time to go to race and so that's when you pick between the world championships race single circuit or practice now uh i'm like you i just went right to single race and took off um what, how did you feel about the way that the game looked? I mean, graphically speaking, we've played a lot of racing games on here. I mean, we know which one we think the best. Mm -hmm. I think we could agree that Lotus is at those two is at the top of the heat. Mm -hmm. And then we've had some that kind of were in the ballpark, like J Jaguar. Mm -hmm. How did you figure? How did you put this one in the mix, just on the graphics well, alone? Well, you've got to look at it from the the viewpoint. So obviously, I'm not going to compare this to the Formula One games that what was his name, Jeff Crammon did. Yeah. That are the first person games. I'm putting this up against. Although Lotus. Those, were, those were quite good. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. I mean, and those are and the, those are older ones too. Let's let's get this out of the way. If you want to play a real F1 game, go play one of those games because those games are rich with options. They play like real F1 races yeah but this is more on the arcadey side which is fine yeah um i would say this game looks and handles worse than lotus 2 but it handles and looks better than jaguar xj220 definitely looks better than jaguar it, handles it's it's sort of i would say it's closer the look of it I was surprised. Actually, it was quite nice. It looks, yeah. It's for, got elevations. It's got curves. It's got straightaways. The, the colors nice. are the, big and beautiful. The uh, speed is the there. The speed is there. I really like the HUD. The yeah. HUD is is it's it's informative. The one thing I don't like is that you don't get an overhead map. That's Boy, the one that thing is I was one missing. thing I was missing mm. is that overhead map. You're not wrong. And, and this game has many flaws, which we'll get to. But I, it, from the look of it, you're talking. Let's say okay. So when you go to um, when you go to single race, you can it lets you pick from pretty much all the tracks, which mm -hmm. is great. Sixteen tracks. Now, is every track totally unique? No, but there are differences, and I know from reading some comments that certain tracks have things on them that are at those tracks. All right, I, I, that's what they say. Don't know, um, but the, the sky is nice. The weather effects are. They're okay. Yeah, they're not they're, as good they're, as like they're St. Lotus, okay. but they're okay. They're okay. Uh, and the car looks pretty good. It looks, I think, it looks better than the Lotus car. I like this, or not Lotus, but the the Jag. This is, I mean, this. I looks, like this more than the, than the Jag. I would, I would compare this to something like uh, Pole Position Two in the arcade. It's very Pole Position. It reminds me of. The, we had, me and Brent used to own one of these set down racer games, and it was like more. It was one that just ripped off. Uh, it was called Final Lap, I think. Mm -hmm. It just ripped off pole position like years later. Mm -hmm. It looks like something like that. It yeah. just it's pole position advanced mm -hmm. in terms of the way it looks. Signs go by. 
they're shamelessly plugging their own stuff yeah. in this Which game. Which is fine. Which Including is fine. one of the few games I've played that plugged itself <laughs> in the game. <laughs> game you know, I, if there's anything I know about Formula uh, One, it's full of advertisements. And so. when you and when you go to England, you could you'll go past uh, the Team 17's offices, or you won't go past if they're in the background. Mm. Holland, they're, they're up there too. Mm -hmm. So there's billboards. Uh, it looks good. I, I do feel bad. There, there are plenty of places where you see like a crowd in the background. And they, it looks like they're 600 miles away. So I don't know what they're watching, but they must be bored well, stupid. this is where the budget part of the budget yeah. title comes to the fore. <laughs> yeah. Because, it, you know, ordinarily you'd see, uh, you know, you'd be running through a street that has grandstands on both sides of yeah. you. You know, you'd be passing by physical objects. In this game, this is literally the pole position slash outrun style, where yeah. you see 4.2 quintillion bushes on your right, yeah, and then 4.2 quintillion signs on your left. You know, how would these billboards have survived the storm we just had? They'd be smashed <laughs> cars all over the that's place. That's right, that's right. So, when you're actually in the race, now you could, first you can do your qualifier, or you can just skip that, which I skipped it almost every time. Well, the advantage, I like the way that they do this. Because they don't make you qualify, but if you want to, you can try and get a better shot. But even if you fail your qualifier, even if you totally do horrible, you are still allowed to move on to the next race. Right. right. I really appreciated that. And, uh, and I would often try and, well, I tried it both ways. To be honest with you, it's not difficult to climb through the pack in this game. Yeah. So starting in 22nd place doesn't give you much more more of an advantage than starting in first place. Well, the, the, the problem is, when you climb through the pack, as you said, is the fact that the pack violently accosts your car. That's true. And that's what we've got to talk about now, which is the other racers. Um, we've played a lot of racing games, and racing games have a, a tendency to, when, they're, when, they, when you play them, you've got really two types of games. The old school, the guys just sort of parry back and forth. I'm talking like the real old stuff, where mm -hmm. like, you know, you have the steering wheel, you know, those are just like, they're almost like just a dodge them sort of affair. And then more modern racers, their cars sort of, they attempt to make them act like normal. Mm -hmm. They go to a certain area down the curb, and straight away, they generally try to settle in somewhere. Right. In this game, they decided to combine those two things. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And so the cars are very, like, I'm not going to say vindictive, but suicidal would be mm -hmm. a better way to put it. They cannot wait to smash themselves into you. On the flip side, if you've got an indestructible car, why not try to hit the guy that can be hurt? Yeah, yeah. And so, one of, I'd say the number one most frustrating thing about this game is the other drivers. And they make this game, not, not only they make it less fun, they almost make it not fun. Because... On a, on a straightaway with more than a, one dr guy, on, even with one guy, it can be difficult, but with more than one, you're screwed because these guys were just literally are just randomly moving. And I, and the first couple races, I was like, my God, I'm never going to get out of 11th place or mm -hmm. you can't get there. Mm -hmm. And eventually I learned that the only real chance you've got to pass these cars without hitting them or getting hit is to catch them in a curve which is not what you would do in a real race. Right. But in this racing, you absolutely want to catch all these guys on the curb. You never want to pass guys on the straightaway. And if you do manage to pass them, you got lucky, mm -hmm. effectively. Even no matter what speed you're going, on top of everything else, when you hit another car, not only does it slow you down, sometimes it spins you out, sometimes it knocks you off the road, but it damages your car. And your car takes damage in, her, in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Like one hit will do like 12, 15 points of damage, it doesn't take hardly any time for you to be damaged, and that's where going to the pits comes in. So what did you think about the enemy cars in this? Uh, I mean, they, they, they certainly bother you, but again, I would put this game above pole position because you don't immediately blow up on impact. I like the fact that's that you have, you have a goodly amount of health uh, for your car, and you are able to pit every lap, of course, to, to heal the damage in your car. Um, the the car the AI is definitely the weak point of the game. I have a feeling that the AI is probably on games like this. That's where a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the budget goes to making a good AI, and so that's probably where they cut the corner here. Um, but you know, it didn't it didn't really that was not the worst part of this game for me. Really? Yeah. What was, was the worst part for you? You're gonna hear this. The worst part of this game for me is that these tracks are not F1 tracks. These tracks don't behave like real F1 tracks. In this game, you can constantly be on the throttle pretty much 95% of the time. And that's not the way F1 works. 
The way F1 works is that you have constant hairpin turns. There are lots of sections where you're driving extremely slow, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. You've got to manipulate your brakes. You've got to manipulate the tires. You've got to look and see how many laps you have to go. None of those things are present in this game. This is essentially pole position with better graphics. They, they've made no concessions to the fact that this is a Formula One game. And that's really unfortunate because there are lots of racing games that you can play that are just flat out better than this, like Lotus. The thing that they could do is they could make this game, they could take this engine and not do any extra work and put in a couple things to make this more like Formula One racing. I didn't find the break in this game and I was still able to win races. That tells you something right there. Um, I, you can make an arcade style racer, that's fine. But still, give me the opportunity to pit and change tires. Give me the opportunity to, uh, to, to do the things that make <clears throat> F1 unique. Because otherwise, you might as well just be playing Lotus 2. Well, you know, the funny thing, I mean, listen, you're talking about anything about F1. But even I knew something was going on. Because when you go to the pit, all they do is fix your is fix your car, and it looks like. And someone, I to, I'm not going to take credit for this. Someone in the lemon forum said it, but it looks like your picker are milking the car. Yeah, <laughs> it's very similar. It's what it looks like, and they're not ch like. You're right. There's no tire wear. There's none of that crap. Mm -hmm. Like none of that happens. Right. And I know that's a big part of it. But the the fact that there's so much damage mm -hmm. to your car. Is a, it's amazing how quickly it adds up. Yeah, now, because here's the thing. Yeah, Duncan says this is arcade F1. That's fine. I, I understand that. Maybe you don't want to put in tire changing and stuff like that. Yeah. But then, you know, it's just like, give me, you know, give me something. Maybe like you're working with your teammate. Maybe you can jump into your teammate's car like you can on one of the other F1 games. Yeah, does your teammate have any bearing in no, this game? No, nothing. Even when you're playing... Like, I play arcade mode most mm -hmm. of the time. Even if your teammate does well and you don't, it doesn't matter. You're right. still gone. And here, and, and if you're not going to do any of that stuff, then give me other cars to pick from besides F1 cars. Let's make it, you know, give me a Porsche to run around in, you know. So, so, so really, see, that explains, because to me, like, I don't give a crap about F1. So, I didn't notice that. I bet you'd get into it if you gave it a chance. Well, I'm not a maybe. It's pretty good. But it, to me, that wasn't, to me, it was, like, what is... When you play like pit uh, pole position, mm -hmm. what is that? IndyCar? What is that? It, I think it's supposed to be IndyCar. Okay, but it's some kind of amorphous thing where you go. Well, no, no. I take it back. It is supposed to be F1 because you're you're racing a lot of like international right. tracks. And but stuff when like you that. play it, it's this is very similar. Yeah. Like you said, it's a it's you're out in the middle of a, of a void mm -hmm. uh, that's a huge flat yeah. area, and you're uh, it's arcade. It's perfect it's for 1983. It's it's totally arcade. Well, I mean these sorts of games were around for years. Mm -hmm. Even I'd say in the early nineties. Yeah, I'll buy sure. it. And I don't and the thing is they they tried to make this look better. I'll buy that. But at the end of the day, uh, if you're looking for and we know a lot of people that are into these sorts of games look for depth. There's no depth. Mm -hmm. There's zero there's no car tweaking. There's like you said there's no pitting. Mm -hmm. The teams really you can screw with the names, but it's like changing the names of like fourth and inches. Ultimately, it doesn't mean anything. Right. You can just do it. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the when you play arcade mode, it automatically ups the difficulty as you go. That's that's what they say. And then when you play the normal mode, and by the way, arcade mode you do three laps, which is good. I, I love wanna, that part. I didn't want to do five. That that's something else. Mm -hmm. You don't. Uh, if you're not playing arcade mode, you don't get a three lap yeah. option. Why not just give me a three lap option I don't know. all the way through? I don't. I guess is that an IndyCar rule or a pit F1 rule or something? No, I don't because know. No, there's no, there's no. Listen, all these, all these races are like many dozens of. Well, laps. maybe this is the one point they're gonna stick with. <laughs> you will not do three laps because I didn't want to do five laps. I wanted three total max. Mm. Anyway, and really one is okay. But I wanted to do so. I always played arcade. Now I tried the other ones. I fooled with the difficulty. But the difficulty, like, I don't know exactly what it did because the other drivers drive like maniacs. Right. So I don't know whether, I mean, you can't make them more insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I watched a lot of people on YouTube playing this who, all, who and everyone to a man jack would get to a group of cars. And this is a game that will make you cuss mm -hmm. and beat your, the table with mm -hmm. your hand because it's frustrating in a, in a not fun way. Yeah. And now you finished, you did great. 
when it come, what was your secret to getting past these computerized cars? I just felt like I had a good, I had a good handle on what this game was. You know, I, I didn't, like I said, not, I, you, you can't, you got to lay off the accelerator, you know, and like you said, you got to pass the guys in the turns. So that's not entirely unheard of, by the way. When you, in F1, that happens all the time. When you get up on a guy, mm -hmm. you literally, if, if, if you're like a straightaway, I just had to slam on the brake. Yeah, yeah, you just let off the accelerator and, but, and you wait for a turn. Does that happen in F1 where the guy's complete to a complete stop? No. <laughs> No, that, like that, that really killed. happens. That really happens. And of course, you know, the amount of rubbing in this game is, is How highly much damage can unrealistic. That F1 take? Yeah, anytime there's any sort of clipping at all in F1, the race stops. Yeah. So, uh, can you imagine how many, uh, what, yellow flags would be after yeah. this? I mean, I got a white flag. Right. You'd be, oh, I'd be flying a white flag. Get me out of here. I got <laughs> but, you know, overall, overall, this game is definitely, was definitely worth the purchase price at its time of release. If you were an arcade racer fan and you played the crap out of Lotus and you were ready for something else, yeah, you could you could do worse than picking this up for a bargain price. Thirteen pounds. Listen, there's a reason why it reviewed pretty well for that because that price is low. However, what you've got here is um, how many times have we said this on this show? A thousand. You've got a huge missed opportunity. Here's a game that drives me nuts. You've got a game that has great acceleration, pretty graphics. Mm -hmm. It looks like, take the, okay, it's not F1 realistic. Okay, that's fine. Screw that. Give me three laps. Why not three? Make it so the other cars don't act like morons. Mm -hmm. Is that so hard? Is I, that so hard? I think that is the hard thing, though. I think I think you hit the nail on the head. I think making better AI, like, here's what, here's what I think happened, okay? Yeah. Uh, the Hollow Dream brought a demo version of, uh, of, of F-17 Challenge uh, to Team 17, yeah, yeah. okay? And Team 17's like, okay, that's great. We'll publish this. And they're like, great. We're going to go back and we're going to make some change. And they're like, nope, <laughs> we're putting it out as is. Listen, they took Budget the time title. to put all the Team 17 crap all over those billboards. That didn't, uh, yeah, I mean, that probably took a day. So. Did you see the number of billboards? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. You've got something. By the way, here's something else that, that Lotus gives you. Lotus 1 gave it to you, Lotus 3. This would be another game. This would make the game more fun. Multiplayer, yeah. split screen, yeah. just the two of you. Yeah. That would be okay because yeah. you don't have to worry about all the other cars. Yeah. You know, because the way they do the HUD in this, what did oh, you think of the HUD? The, HUD's, the, talk about the, the HUD. HUD's great. It's very sort of photorealistic to what you'd see on a, on a real F1 car. And the HUD is removable at any time by, I believe, using the space bar. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know about removing the HUD. But if you remove the HUD, you'd sort of be screwed. You don't want to remove the HUD. I'll, you just do it to take in the sights. Which key brought the brought the map up? That's what I <laughs> Yeah. The, the, the lack of an overhead map and also the fact that you never see an overhead view of these courses ever yeah. removes a lot of the personality and really makes this game boring. Because you can't get a feel for what makes each track unique. You're, yes, that is a that's a great point. Without that overhead view, when you're driving, not just at the beginning of the race, I want to see it when I'm driving, because otherwise it just seems like a series that we've played, we played a game on the ST, and it just seems like you would just go left for a while, and you'd go right. That's exactly and what straight. you do. Well, mm -hmm. that's just a made up track. Right. I want to see, where's the hairpin? Yep. Where's the, you know, uh, uh, where's the, the bridge or mm -hmm. what, something? There's not enough that this just had nice tunnels. Mm -hmm. I like the tunnel effect in this, yeah. which was remin reminiscent of the Cram and game. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, this game, this has better graphics than the Cram and game. But in terms of the actual p gameplay, the the AI and stuff in the Cram was like a thousand times. Was it Vroom that we played? Yeah. I believe mm -hmm. it was off the charts better in terms of this. If you could have these graphics with that that AI and the feel of that one, it's kind of a bummer if I'm on his boat, but. You know, I, I would call this I mean, a mixed bag. I know you may have heard that from me before. Uh, so the uh, the critics of this were interesting. And I read a lot of these reviews to see what was going on with them. Because when you see a game like this, you know it's going to be kind of wacky. So the people at Lemon give this a 6.64, mm -hmm. which I think is a pretty fair assessment of this game from the Lemon people. However, it reviewed quite a bit uh, it better in the old days, uh, Amiga Action, number 50, by the way, gave this an 81. Amiga Computing gave it a 90. Uh, Amiga Format gave it an 80. Amiga Joker, you know they weren't having it. No. 57. Amiga Power, 55. Uh, CU Amiga, 79. And the 174 Average Magazine uh, rank, according to Lemon, 74%. I will say, I read uh, the uh, uh, Amiga Power review in particular, 
And it, he was saying the exact same stuff we were. And also, there were two problems with this game. Number one, it's a weird dichotomy. It's a game that's too easy. Even And they said after playing it for a week or two, you're at the hardest level, you can crush it. And once you get out in front, you just have to dodge a few of the rear enders. Then you're, go, you're yeah. gone. Yeah. And then secondly, the eight car AI was stupid and there has no depth. Mm-hmm. They're right. You know, now they decided 57. I think that's a little low. Oh, I think it's crazy low. And where would you where would your assessment be? In this this one, is this Bowen? is a solid B, solid B title for me. Really, I, I would give this about an eighty percent. Okay, okay. Um, what do you think about our reviews from our chat boat? Uh, our Discord reviews include Pajaco sixty five hundred two leaving this nugget. Wow, burial. He says, I ended up playing the A500 version because trying to play this on the A1200 was like that scene from the end of 2001 where the dude is warping through the other dimension. On the A1200, this is virtually unplayable. Interesting. Weird, because I put on a mystery and it brand great. <clears throat> yeah. F17 looks the part and runs at a decent clip, and although it suffers from instabends that most racing games of the time have, you get used to it and start to control the car with more practice. I found that with older racing games, the trick is to just let go of the gas and rapid fire the accelerate button around corners to get your speed at a reasonable rate. The graphics and sound are pretty good and your car is very well drawn and animated. The turning and even spin out animations are silky smooth. And you get a lot of tracks to race on, so you get a lot of game. So this should be a fantastic game. However, the opponent <laughs> drivers in this are either drunk or being controlled by space invaders. They weave left and right, even on straights. Avoiding them most of the time seems impossible. And for me, this spoiled the game because your success can depend on the opponent cars being in the right place at the right time with any skill going out the window. Honestly, if they made the other drivers better and made the hitboxes a little smaller, this could be a fantastic racing game. Ma'am. But in its current state, I'm not a fan. Six out of ten. There you go. There you go. I I agree with almost everything he said. It's This is a close but no cigar for me. I mean, I would I hate to do it, but I mean, this is... When you when with, with with the way the gameplay is, they're wasted. The great graphics and the feeling of speed, which is a shame. And I, I everything else like the options for me were as for an arcade racer were good enough. The feel was fine. The control was fine. But when you go in there and botch the simple things, or maybe not so simple with the AI, to me it's just it brings down the whole title quite a bit. Say la vie, but it's the way it goes, my friend. Welcome to Retro Rewind. I'm your host, British Jones. Whether you enter the Amiga, Commodore 64, or Tiger Floral Print Speed Suits, Retro Rewind has all you need from the friendly hosers of the Great White North. Looking to upgrade your Amiga? Check out the Amiga OS 3.2.2 Kickstart ROM for just $18. Or maybe you need a C64 or C128 diagnostic harness. Grab one while they're hot. Don't miss our best sellers like the 1541 Transit Card for just $1, or the incredible Amiga coin cell battery adapter. Shop now at Retro Rewind Limited and bring your classic computers back to life. Retro Rewind Limited. Frank's the man. Amiga News. All right, Aaron, we're kicking the news off this week. With a We're video, it right off the show. What's that? <laughs> with, a, with a video from our good buddy Neil RMC. Uh, actually, this is from his uh, his partner, the owner of the Arcade Archive, which I believe the Arcade Archive is like the place downstairs in the mill. It is. Um, you said it was awesome. It is. It's it's very nice. It's a small arcade, but they cram a lot of games in there. Uh, and you know they are talking about this new project. We're gonna they're gonna try and three D print. A computer space machine. Uh, now, Aaron, have you ever have you gotten bit by the three D printing bug? No, and there's a reason for that because I've been bit by the lack of money bug. Ah. and so the, and I've heard that the three D printing <laughs> bug is an expensive little fella. So I've stayed. I away believe from the way three D printing works is you open up that little door and you just throw money. Into what I do it. here's how it works for me. I call up David Z. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Dave, please help me. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then Dave takes care of me because Dave is a good guy. Days later in the mail, another Listen, Spider-Man bus Dave, arrives at no, your home. No, Dave is Dave is the man. He is the man when it comes to that. And it's funny because his 3D printed Mister Case I use every single day. So mm-hmm. God bless the man. But yeah, mm-hmm. this is this is a whole different level of insanity here. 
uh, printing something. This, uh, did, I can't remember when we were at the Galloping Ghost. Did they have one of these? I can't remember. I don't remember seeing. I don't one. recall seeing one there. There might not. There might not have. Have been. you ever seen one in the flesh, baby? I know I have. I think when I went to Disney World, they have uh, they have a, a retro arcade that's huge, yeah. not as big as Galloping Ghost, but I believe they had one there. Uh, but here's the thing: yeah. computer space, not that much fun. Let's be honest. Well, it's funny it because was, they, it, we, when me and Brent did a uh, show on ARG a couple weeks ago on uh, on the actual machine that affected where they birthed computer space, the uh, the big mainframe computer, the college mainframe that was responsible for a lot of firsts, mm -hmm. and computer space was one of them before they actually, they stole it. I think it was called Space War mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. Before another Nolan Bushnell special, <laughs> as I recall, and he horked it, but... The, the the funny thing about the uh, the the, the uh, computer space is it's so this is where they didn't really have an idea of what these things would look like. Mm -hmm. it, so this oh yeah, and it's an incredible looking machine. Yeah, it's very gameplay wise maybe it's a five out of ten. Looks wise, like do I want this in my house? Eleven out of ten. Oh yeah, and I don't know what they're made of to be honest. Like in real life, I, is think, it's, I think they're fiberglass. fiberglass. I know they've appeared in like, as I recall, uh, one was in a Woody Allen movie called Sleeper, and it was one in like uh, Toilet Green. Toilet Green, that's the first time one. I saw it. So yeah, they're real crazy looking uh, gimmicks mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, pff, the, I, they're super expensive. And the thing is, there was a time where you could get these things. Mm -hmm. They were still going to cost a few bucks, mm -hmm. but that was back in the di the distant past. Because mm -hmm. I'd see every once in a while, I'd see somebody shilling one mm -hmm. for a couple G. Mm -hmm. Those days are over. They're multiple G's. Now, big money G's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just saw Mortal Kombat sell for $1,200. So you know if that's happening. Really? Yeah. Uh, like the, the original Mortal Kombat? Yeah, local here. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Bo, we live in, well, we're out of that game. That's yeah. for sure. Bo. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we'll continue to monitor that. Next up, this is an article from um, our friend over at Amiga Love. Yes. This Love is a that. little essay that he's written about what he believes to be the greatest box art of all time. Ultima 4 Quest for the Avatar. It is awesome. It looks right off like a DD module or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, and so he goes into a lot of the symbolism, the way the clouds are pointing in on you, the way that the face is turned away from you to allow you to picture yourself as this guy, the Moses kind of look to yeah. it as he's parting the ocean. You've got the uh, the ankh up there, the glowing ankh. The what? The glowing ankh. I thought it was called an ankh. An Is it ankh? called an ankh? Ankh? I don't know. I've never heard anybody pronounce it that It's one way. of those words I've only read. So. Really? You never... Listen, Who ankh, are you talking to about... When I was in school, <laughs> ankhs were a big deal, okay? Because I was in ancient Listen, Egypt at the time. I, I, I see the, to your pronunciation. The <laughs> ankh, the glowing ankh. So, uh, yeah. It's, this, this reminds me so much of, like, uh, uh, an art an art style that you would see on like back glass on a pinball machine. They love doing this mm -hmm. where the, you see an un, uh, usually it's a hot chick with a nice hiney right. staring off at something. You're like, Oh, <laughs> but this is, this is a great evocative. It makes you really think what's this, what's going to happen here? Mm -hmm. You know, but it's, and it the is cool, a nice the cool thing is that Amiga love uh, sends a, a letter to the, uh, the author of this and he writes back and he says that uh, your, your your symbolism is much appreciated. It makes me look incredibly smart. Yeah. I guess he didn't think of all the things that uh, Amiga Love did. But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. It's a little love letter from, mm -hmm. the, from Love. That's what Love does. That's what he does. Now, Aaron, we've got some uh, new game news coming up. Thanks to our buddy Neil at Indie Retro News. Uh, the Master System game Vigilante is uh -huh. coming to the Commodore Amiga. Yeah. Now, did, did you play a lot of Vigilante back in the day? Not the biggest Vigilante fan, if I'm honest. Uh, it's just one that I didn't enjoy that much. I, I, it it seems to be a Double Dragon sort of uh, homage. Yeah, yeah, and I never, I'll have to be honest with you, I don't know if I've ever played on the Master System, to be honest with you, Boat, so mm. I don't know if it's... This is coming to us from Niso Games. Niso Games, uh, most famous for Super Delivery Boy, yeah. which we, we covered like on our last, our last we want, Christmas we, episode. We wanted updated like more of that. Yeah. Like, uh, they need to flesh that out more. Absolutely. That was, a, that was they real had fun. Good, they had something going there. So anyway, Vigilante, it's making its way to us very, very soon. Scorpion Engine City. Yeah, so this one's still in the, in the process of being put out. That's right. Might be fun. Uh, coming up next, check this thing out, Aaron. This is a mystery. It's a mystery Amiga 1200 expansion. This oh, is our yeah? buddy Jan Beta. Not really our buddy. Much more popular and famous and 
prettier than we are. Uh, he is uh, he's talking about this uh, this A twelve hundred board that nobody's ever seen or heard of before. It's it, how crazy is it, Aaron, that we are going on forty years, almost forty years from the launch of the A twelve hundred, and uh, people are still finding boards that they can't explain. Well, listen. There was a time where everybody and his brother was making something to stick in that belly slot. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm looking at this thing, and it's it's odd because it looks like it's got a 68,000 slot on it, and it's got RAM. So it doesn't look like there's a it doesn't do a t I don't know what that connector on the end. I'm not sure. Does he decide what it does or what it is? I didn't actually finish watching the video, well, so I figured I figured that we just we'd speculate on what it was. I see. I see. Well, I I am interested and see what this thing is. Well, I, I, I went to the test run and I saw that and I figured it was something boring. Well, they, they, this is the, the thing. Now I see that right now, I'm looking at this thing uh, and it, it doesn't have, it's not an MPU. It doesn't have any sort of accelerator on it. For you at home, that are listening and not watching. Uh, this board just looks pretty generic. The only thing I see of any interest is that is the slot on there, and it's not a micro, it's not a coprocessor slot, so maybe it's some sort of accelerator, but I don't think it is. It looks like a RAM expansion, and something, but who knows? There were, if you go to like the Big Book of Amiga Hardware, I don't know if you've ever been on that I site. I have, I have. Which, I love that site, and I, I I've got a, I've got a mystery card in my twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is this thing? Well, it's a, some, it's very similar. It's, it's just a memory thing and real time clock, I think, on there or something. So. There's a ton of these things. Back when uh, uh, everybody thought they could make a buck, it's in some ways we're going, we're there again mm -hmm. because we, every it seems like we always see weird stuff with pies and, and and crap getting stuffed into these things. So maybe in the future someone will be having this conversation about something that came out this year. It yeah, surprise me a bit. Yeah. So anyway, uh, and our next story uh, is uh, this is uh, using the Amiga 500 yeah. as a guitar pedal. So what? this is. <laughs> Magical Synth Adventures. What? This is Polly, and they are looking at different ways that you can use uh, the, um, this is uh, basically, they go through and they're like, okay, this is what an Amiga sounds like, just uh, a guitar running it straight through an Amiga 500, which was something I didn't even know you could do. Yeah. You somehow connect them together, and then so Polly's going to town there. All right. And then after that, they're like, well, and now we're gonna run some crazy synth effects going through the Amiga. And it's basically, you know, you can turn your Amiga into a multi-effects pedal. How crazy is that? How strange. I, I, what a, who even thought this up? Uh, How did he hook his guitar to the Amiga? Well, I, I believe that there is some sort of an interface involved. A guitar to, uh, maybe just a line in. Uh -huh. I mean, the Amiga's got some sort of line in gimmick, right? I, Midi listen, in. you talking to me? I don't I, know. I don't do any music stuff on the Amiga. You've heard my my attempts at a well, mod file. I'm going to, uh, Paulie's going to be at Kickstart this year. Yeah. So I'll talk to them and I will find out what's going on. I'm sure somebody out there. Paulie's got a nice trackball. Yeah. That's, I, I'm a big fan of those too. So yeah, that's neat. I like that. I, I mean, the thing is, once you get the signal in, I have no doubt that there's, you can write some wacky crap mm -hmm. on it. So I, I don't know who would do that, but hey, what the heck? Amiga 500, at least you can get those things. So, oh my, look at this. This is our final story, Aaron. All we right. got uh, some, uh, speaking of Kickstart, we got some new Kickstart news. Check out, this is the uh, the trader floor here. Everybody who's anybody is going to be at, uh, at Kickstart this year as far as, well, really anybody. Uh, but if you are looking to buy some gear and you don't want to pay uh, some, uh, yeah, sorry, you're nobody. I'm nobody. Um, if, and you're you're not looking to pay for shipping, no matter what you want, it is there. You've got the David J. Pleasance booth right in front of the bar. Man, I, I hope you're going to come home with one of his patented jumpsuits. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got a Mega Kit, Easy Retro, Checkmate, uh, Stephen Jones is going to be there, Mega Attic, Pixel will be man in that booth, I'm sure. The Retro Hour, Retro Supplies, Retro 32, Immortal, Immortal Joysticks. And there's going to be, and it's not just Amiga stuff. There's going to be tons of retro stuff. If you're into consoles, other computers, yeah, everything's going to be on offer. Okay. Listen, I've got some missions for you when you're over at this. Okay, thing, okay. First of all, we need you need to dig. Uh, we need to find whoever's selling the 
eight uh, a five thousand stuff mm-hmm. in the big money board. Remember we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, maybe Brent was that's anyway. Aon Technology. Yeah. They were in booth to, I, E12. I want you to go. This is your job. Okay. Get your camera out, okay. and I want you to get them to give you a demonstration as to why you care about this. Okay. Thing. Like what? And you don't know either. It's like no. we both need to know. Yeah. Why am I paying this much for this thing? That's I'm sure I, that I'm going to be hosting a panel with right? Trevor with Trevor on it. So then I want you to find it. Is Team 17 at this thing somewhere? Aren't they going to be involved in this in some capacity? Oh, I'm sure they will. You be. You need to go talk to one of those guys and ask them like, what's the scoop on this racing game? Like, what happened here with this AI? Get the scoop on that. In fact, I'm going to make you a list of scoops you need to get on what how these games went wrong. Okay. And this way, you can confront these people face to face. And put their feet to the fire. I will. I will. And then I, I the people exactly whose games that. we liked, don't have to even talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> just the ignore it, them. That's the way it works. This looks great. Bug. And we can't forget one more thing. The Pete Cannon, Stu Cambridge guest VIP table. Yeah. You get your picture, get some autographs. Are you going to have, is the boat cam going to be available for uh, the after party? Are you going to be going around uh, looking at people as they stagger around singing? Absolutely. Yeah. There's going to be footage of everything. You think you're going to hold it together at the after party, but you're going to be out the door. I'm going to be partying on the after party. I'm yeah, that's on what the I'm talking floor. about. Because when you party at Boat Fest, if you party yourself into a, into a coma. <laughs> that's true. And this is going to be much larger and more crazy than Boat Fest was. That's true. Levelor won't be there with his booze, though. That oh, was the yeah, difference. blame him. Yeah, I can't recall the part where he held you down and poured it in you. So, Ravi, take care of my boy over there. All right, and finally, one more big news story, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, the special guest host of of Amigos has been announced. Uh, as you know, we are going to record a live episode of Amigos you at are? the event. No, yes. I had no idea. Oh you were my going gosh! Of course, that's why I'm going over there. No one told me. So who's going to be someone? Who's filling in for me? So uh, just a little guy uh, named Mike Daly. Mike, oh. Mike Daly is the creator of Lemmings, yeah, founder of DMA Design. Yeah, I have a fun. So th- the last time it was Amiga Bill, you got to fill in for mm-hmm. me, and now I. Why don't you even, why don't you just go do the show with those guys? Well, after this, this might be your last okay, show. Okay, yeah. I mean, Listen, I, can I still work the, I can still do the computer stuff, right? Come on, uh, throw me a bone here. We'll see, we'll see. But anyway, um, Mike is going to be, we're going to do a different sort of episode of Amigos. Instead of doing <laughs> a, a better <laughs> quality episode, so it's knowledgeable. In, instead of doing a game, we're, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do everything I wanted to do with Dave Haney, but was, it was shut out from. We're going to do a career-spanning yeah. retrospective. Is the Hain man going to be at this thing? I do not believe so. We'll have to ask Rev now. It's still early days. He's not committed yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. You know, there's a lot of guys that just sort of like to keep a low profile and just yeah. show up at these things. Yeah. He might be there. It's funny because just since David Haney's name came up, one of the things we learned from your interview with him was that he got his start on Exidy Sorcerer. That's right. Which is what me and Brent are covering at ARG this weekend. So uh, serendipitous. I'd love to see you uh, talk to him, but... At least you know there's not going to be any interruptions when you're doing this thing. So that should be a lot of fun. This guy should have stories out the yin-yang. Absolutely. And Ravi told me that he's got a professional crew of cameramen and microphone operators. Just that like are Boat be. Fest. And so it's <laughs> it's going to be the exact opposite of Amiga Ireland, where I was running around trying to hook everything up myself. Did we do? And, is this thing going to be streamed? Do we know? Uh, I don't know. Ravi is in the chat right now. We can't see the chat right now. Maybe he can tell us. Uh, if the event will be streamed or not. If it's not going to be streamed, I know that a lot of the things will be available after the fact. I see. Very good, Boat. Sounds like it sounds yes, like Yes, it will be fun. streamed. The, there you uh, go, Ravi everybody. confirms it. There you go. All right, Aaron, what do we got coming up next week Let's on the show? Let's find out. <laughs> well... We're heading back to the islands <laughs> one more time. So this is a sh- we we've covered Rainbow Islands on every system, and we've covered it on Amigos once. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. This is the game. I'm surprised that that these two guys. What are their names? Sal and Louie. I'm surprised that they're not on the UK flag. Like right there on the Union Jack. I think that is the thing. anthem now. The Rainbow <laughs> Islands theme the, uh, song. The um the uh. Well, it's the somewhere over the rainbow, well, they, over and over it again. Depends on which one. They, then you get the uh, or we were sorry about that first song. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, that's this will be this will be interesting. I will say, um, I do like when we have arcade stuff on here. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do this week just for fun because I haven't done this before. We've covered it. I'm gonna play a crap one of the arcade version because you hear this is arcade perfect. We're gonna make the determination. Okay, is it truly arcade perfect. We're gonna find out. We buddy. will do it, guys. We will see you next week. Until then, adios. adios. Amigos is made possible by contributions from listeners like you. 
Patreon supporters help choose the games we play, receive exclusive magnets, and get access to the Amigos Retro Gaming Discord server. Visit patreon.com slash amigospodcast if you'd like to support the show and join our community.